So quite some time ago, I was sent this book, uh, The End of Evangelicalism, Discerning a New Faithfulness for Mission Towards an Evangelical Political Theology by David E. Fitch, by someone on Fitch's um, kind of PR team from Cascade Books, which is an imprint of uh, Wiffenstock. And um, I have wanted for a long time to make uh, the review video of the book because I absolutely loved it. And I kept feeling like uh, I w wouldn't have time to kind of do it justice. Um, but then I figured um, true justice never really arrives anyway. Get it? That was a Derrida joke. Get it? Blake Huggins, looking at you. Um, uh, so I'm just going to do it. Uh, I loved this book. It was awesome. Um, what Fitch is doing is he's situating himself as an evangelical and he's saying, um, it seems to me that what evangelicalism is about is about proclaiming the gospel to all nations. And we say, we mean evangelicals, American evangelicals, say we're doing this, but people aren't listening to us anymore. They're, they're shutting us out. They're saying, oh, you're just conservative. You're just this and this. And he said, whatever they're saying, it's irrelevant. They're not listening to our voice anymore. That's a problem, especially if we think it's our voice that's supposed to help in spreading this good news. So what is going on? And what he says is going on is that we have, <clears throat> or Christian evangelicals have centered themselves uh, around a core of beliefs, um, a triad that he says um, makes up their evangelical identity. And instead of having themselves actually being identified or affiliating or um, connecting their identity to Christ, that is Christ followers, instead their identity is being created by their drive towards these other centers. And uh, he says that the, the centers at play here, the things that they believe in, instead of, or that get in the way of believing in Christ, is uh, threefold. And he goes through in the beginning chapters, uh, first chapter explaining this issue, and then addressing each of the, 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 the things that are a problem. Uh, the inerrant Bible, the decision for Christ, a la Billy Graham, and then the Christian nation. And each uh, chapter is three, four, and five are dedicated to those topics. And he then critiques them, uh, and he says, you know, what what's going on there? Why is it so important that there be an inerrant Bible and the decision for Christ? And what are we doing, and is it really aligned with um, kind of what he understands to be uh, kind of a, a Christian mission that would be effective, or, you know, efficacious in actually having the gospel be preached and people understanding um, what it is that 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 Christ is teaching and the methodology he, that he uses uh is Slavov Zizek's appropriation of L L Lacan's um kind of Freudianesque critique um he's a Lacan is a French um, psychoanalyst and kind of philosopher and Zizek is using Lacan uh, in political kind of critique of, of capitalist systems. And then Fitch is using Zizek, who's using Lacan. Uh, Zizek and Lacan are both very popular these days uh, with Pete Rollins. Uh, his book, Insurrection, which is out, is, is heavily influenced by that, so he tells me. Um, and um, Fitch also uses Zizek very heavily. To get it out of the way, um, he uses Zizek in a way that Zizek would be completely uncomfortable with. Um, the, the basic gist of, of what Zizek and Lacan are saying is that um, our motivations are always swirling about um, an empty core. That there's nothing really there. And so, for example, when we um, try to identify ourselves, we can't positively identify ourselves with the thing that's at the core because with those great big beliefs like justice or, or Christianity or something like that, there's nothing there. There's no there there, says Zizek. And so we define ourselves in opposition to things 
to what Lacan calls the small other, the petit objet, and he says we we fight against them, and so then our identity becomes the things that we're opposed to. So, for example, with the inerrant Bible, you say, well, people who then oppose that um, are the people that you oppose. Same thing with the decision for Christ. Are you churched yet? Have you? Are, is Christ your savior yet? And if the answer is no, well, then you know what you need to do there. Or the Christian nation, oh, the you know the liberals, kind of they're taking our, this country from us. So that the evangelical identity um, is a situatedness of opposition to the people who disagree with their positions. Uh, it's always framed in the negative, therefore. What are you opposed to? As opposed to a positive kind of identification with a, with a thing that's at its core. And Zizek says, this is just how it happens, because there's nothing there. Those big things are not there. That's why Zizek is a dialectical materialist, right? He's very much about the world full stop, doesn't have time for a metaphysics or, or even a, a reality kind of that's out there religiously or based on faith. He says, we can make the world better, but it's just about making the, the world, you know, these material things around us, um, kind of better by acknowledging that the thing that's spinning us around is kind of a hollow center and that we're doing it because we're always being spun around by these oppositions. So let's just acknowledge it and, and move on. So, um, what Fitch says is that um, he wants to use that methodology, that kind of um, critical, continental, philosophical critique that Zizek is using on Christianity. But, but Fitch is making the very significant shift to say, ah, except that at the center is Christ. So the, these critiques are useful diagnostic tools to figure out why we're centered on things other than what we should be. So we're centered on... Um, the inerrant Bible, the decision for Christ, and the Christian nation at the core of who we are and, and, and that, of what the evangelical identity is that way, as opposed to having our core be oriented on Christ. Now, uh, as a thinker, um, I, I, it rubs me the wrong way because it's, it's a kind of a disingenuous appropriation of Zizek who adopted Lacan. Now, Fitch acknowledges this. Uh, he says that Zizek isn't going to like it. And... And then he says, but I'm going to use it anyway. And I'm actually really glad he did. It, it doesn't fit well all the time, but as a diagnostic tool, as a, as a hermeneutic, as a way of thinking, it is pretty useful, and I, and I appreciate that. Um, the book is a great read, I think, um, for folks who are looking to kind of be exposed to a little bit of Zizek uh, and Lacan, but also, I would say, people who are interested in just another perspective about what's going on um, among the progressive or liberal stream of evangelicalism. This is a great book. Um, it is an academic text, uh, but it's not as hard to read as uh, the translations of like Derrida or you know uh, Whitehead um, or, or, or Zizek himself. Um, it's, it's a little bit more uh, approachable. It is an academic text, though. It's not um, for the, the average reader, although you, you certainly could handle it. Um, it's also useful, I would say, for people who are not really um, connected to uh, the evangelical culture, but are looking for a philosophical or kind of political uh, route in there. I'm not really sure it would be effective to um, other conservatives who are... Uh, who identify as conservative evangelicals um, of the of the type which Fitch says are kind of getting it wrong. I'm not really sure he makes his argument accessible to those folk. Um, and I don't really know because I'm clearly on the, the progressive or liberal side of things. Uh, it closes with kind of a, a, a very happy and rosy, um, potentially rose-colored glasses look at... Um, recovering the core of our politics for mission and he looks at the emerging and missional church movement and he looks at uh pete rollins um and a couple other folks mclaren i think too um in saying look at these are some good examples and then he does do a good job of saying and here's some places where they're where they're falling a little shy so you know he does offer them up as 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 models of people who are thinking um in such a way um that he thinks is positive and potentially is useful for an authentic 
reaffirming evangelical stance in the world that centers itself on Christ is missional and is thrown out not by opposition to opponents, but by a rootedness in the Christian movement and the movement of the Holy Spirit. Great book. Um, I'm very glad to have read it. Uh, it's marked up all over the place. Um, in great engagement with some great thinkers. Um, like I said, McLaren and Rollins, Zizek, Lacan, Yoder is all over the place. Um, and useful if you want to learn about uh, master signifiers, uh, American evangelicalism, and a possible progressive critique of uh, a movement that is rooted in the very good work of spreading the good news of this great faith that we have all inherited one way or the other. End of evangelicalism, question mark, discerning a new faithfulness for mission towards an evangelical political theology. David E. Fitch from Cascade Books in a print of Wittenstock. Great text.